Awesome, and there we go. Afterburner. I mean Space Harrier. A great game overall and a technical breakthrough for its time. And now that we've wrapped that up, we can move on to... Wait a minute! We've covered the main game, which was awesome. But I did want to cover some of its bonus content, including, of course, the Sega Ages 2500 Lite remake, which I actually found really enjoyable. Welcome back to the Review Den, my friends. You're doing great! In late 1986 and 87, Sega brought Space Harrier to the Mark III, or Master System as we know it. It was an impressive recreation, using its own technical workarounds to translate the larger-than-life sprites of the arcade to the humble 8-bit system. By drawing scenery and enemies as background objects rather than sprites, they could be displayed larger than usual. They do appear blocky and the game runs kind of slow and jittery, but for a home console this was impressive, and gamers ate it up at the time, making it one of the better sellers for the system overall. What I'm interested in though is bonus content, and the Master System port delivers here too. See, the original game offered no real story except for the welcoming, welcoming you to the Fantasy Zone, Zone, which made many players assume the game shares a universe with Sega's own Fantasy Zone series. And several Fantasy Zone games do reference Harrier, but the Master System port contains opening and closing text crawls to really cement the game universe. Uh, let's see, a beautiful utopia called Dragonland, and then in the space year 6226, oh I like that, the Evil One unleashes barbaric and evil creatures. Everything imaginable appears to have been destroyed. Wow, that escalated quickly. The friendly dragon Uriah searched for, ah, here we go, and lo and behold, a fighter from Earth with physic powers. Physic powers appeared, and a legendary battle is about to unfold. Okay, so it's not Star Wars, but we have our story, courtesy of the Master System. And as I mentioned in my review of the main game, Sega's 8-bit ports add an extra boss after the main experience. The twin fire dragons are a fearsome challenge and they look neat, but best of all is the easter egg that they were named after Sega's president, Hayao Nakayama. Finally, off of a secret options menu, you can opt to use a jet as your character. It's just a single basic sprite, and I'm not sure if it's anything close to the original game idea, but it's a cool reference nonetheless. Finishing the game is no small ordeal, thanks to the inability to continue except through an obscenely long cheat code, but doing so gives you a congratulatory text and some sequel bait. Fun. The Game Gear port is really cool though. While I respect the technical aspects of the Master System port, the game did seem a bit mm, chonky to me, at least on a big television. Shrunk down to a portable screen though, this was much more impressive. Best of all though, this version is actually a bit of a remix. You only have 12 levels compared to the original 18, but the enemies all get cool redesigns. The dragons now have creepy human faces, the satellites and fighters now look all biomechanical, and best of all, the one-eyed mammoths are now cyber one-eyed mammoths. I dare you to show me a game with enemies as cool as cyber mammoths. One-eyed green cyber mammoths. Even with all their billions, EA and Activision Blizzard can't match this kind of awesome. Thank you, Sega. Now, the Game Gear doesn't have the story texts, but it does keep Haya O, and thanks to level passwords, is a much more approachable experience. It may look similar to the Master System port at first glance, but the nice new ingredients and tweaks made this more enjoyable to me. Now we have the big one, though, with the Sega Ages 2500 release. This released as Ages Volume 4 for Japan, or part of the Sega Classics collection for the rest of us. Just like OutRun, this is a light 3D remake with a few extra levels. But it also includes some updates to the gameplay and visuals, which make this much more worthwhile, in my opinion. For one, it just seems more visually appealing than OutRun 2500. OutRun played pretty similar to its original, which was its saving grace, but the scenery and traffic sometimes bordered on shovelware. This looks much nicer. The scenery is colorful, the enemies are nicely rendered as 3D objects, and Harrier himself sports a rad, can I say that? Sports a rad new look. The remixed music is awesome, and the voices and sounds feel much more modern and clean. As I mentioned, Sega farmed out a lot of development for their 2500 series games, and the quality was a bit of a roller coaster. This, to me anyway, 
feels like a better effort. The gameplay is spot on, and some cool additions were added. You have your standard blaster as before, but the game also features turbo fire and works it into the gameplay. What I mean by that is that your fire rate will eventually decay, or slow down, as you continue using it, and you'll need to pick up shot power-ups to recover back to full speed. Yes, this version sports power-ups like more traditional shmups, which traditionalists may not like, but I appreciate. It gives you a reason to shoot down the enemies rather than just avoid them, which I always felt was a small weak point for Space Harrier and Afterburner. You also have a lock-on laser straight off of Panzer Dragoon, with power-ups acting similarly. It's a nice partner to your main blaster and even lets you focus on avoiding obstacles, which I appreciate, while still chipping away at enemies. Again, it's a complement to your main firepower. It's too slow to use exclusively, but it opens up some new strategy to the game. Flash bombs are available when things get too hectic, letting you clear the screen of everything, including scenery. Revenge! But these are limited, so use wisely. And finally, you can find the occasional barrier power-up to save your skin from an enemy shot. Together, the power-ups help you cope with the new difficulty and balance of the game, which is slightly different from the original. The game now puts a heavier emphasis on combat, while scenery is less punishing. Enemy patterns are similar, but timing is different, and you have to deal with enemy fire from more directions. It's not a revolutionary new game by any stretch. You can tell this is still Space Harrier, but it's been given some new twists. Like the Saturn, you can only continue every six levels, but you now have three continues per run, so it all balances out nicely. One final option you may have noticed is the ability to choose between a textured landscape and the traditional checkerboard. This is actually really cool though, even if you don't like the new look, because the textured ground option actually gives you a few additional levels, where you travel through cave areas and meet totally new enemy waves. It gives you the chance for more power-ups and a better score. You'll even face an additional boss toward the end. Very nice. If it wasn't clear, yeah, I really like this take on Space Harrier. No, it's not a full remake, but at least it includes enough new content, new twists, and, to just be honest here, prettier graphics to make this feel worthwhile. Outside of Japan, it's not quite the issue as we got this in a nice collection, but it's cool that it does the title justice and feels more worthy of the Sega badge. Oh, and lastly, rounding things out, we have the AM2 ports for 3DS and Switch, which both contain Haya O, although you do have to jump through a few extra hoops to reach them on 3DS. At least the 3DS emulates the hydraulic cabinet action. I know, I know, most gamers will be like, what's so special about that? But seriously, if you had the chance to play these arcade machines back in the day, the hydraulic cabinets just made the experience all the more special. It's just something you could only enjoy back in those old mall arcades. And there you go! Some cool new bonus content added to the original Space Harrier. At the very least, these games all include that cool secret boss, while the Master System gives us some world building, even if it is kind of simple, to help players get more invested in the IP. The Game Gear and Ages 2500 offer you new and remixed ways to experience a classic, and really had me wishing Sega would revive the Space Harrier franchise like they did with OutRun 2. I know Sonic is popular and all, but man, Sega, look at all the worlds you created. Don't just leave them hanging. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you'd like to help my channel grow, maybe watch some of my other videos. But from me here at the Review Den, I'll be back soon with another review. And no matter what, be sure to keep going, even when things get tough, because you are worth it.